In order to create an image that the text will wrap around in InDesign, we need to do a number of things in our Photoshop file. So here's a picture of pizza in my Photoshop file, and what I'm going to do is prepare that image and create the paths that will allow me to do the text wrap in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete whatever color in the background. Um, this did have a white, a white background in the beginning of the project. So what I'm going to do is hit delete to delete the white background. And now you see, you see that I have the selection uh, of the background selected. What I need to do is select the inverse of that. So I go ahead and go up to the inverse under the select menu in Photoshop. So now I only have the actual pizza slice selected. And that's really what we need to do. That's the key to making the paths work in InDesign. So in our Paths palette, if you don't have your Paths palette out, if it's gone, you go up to Window, and then you simply go down to Paths. And here's your Paths palette. This is where we're going to do all the work. The first thing we need to do in the Paths palette is make a work path. And here, you go to the drop-down menu in the Paths palette, which is up here in the corner, and you click on Make Work Path. Use the default tolerance of 2.0. That will work just fine. The next step is number six on your sheet, and it says um, make, save the path. So you go ahead and save the path as path one. And then the third part is to make what's called a clipping path. You make the clipping path, put in a value of two in the flatness if it's not already there, and simply say OK. We go ahead and save our Photoshop file. I'm just going to go ahead and resave what I already have. And then I'm going to move over to my InDesign file, which is already open. My InDesign file has two columns of text. And we went over how to do the two columns of text by creating two columns. We simply stretch out the work that we already have. So no matter what I do to these columns, those columns will stay, those, um, the text will stay together. So here's the two columns. If I move this down, it's going to drag text from the first column. If I move the first column down, it will drag text from the previous column. I need to push this text up, and I can make this text column bigger, smaller, and all of the text will be constantly in flux, no matter which direction I pull it. But for this particular image with the pizza, I think I'm going to have two columns of text with a gutter in between. And maybe I'll make one of them a little bit smaller, one of them a little bit bigger. I'll use my one-third, two-thirds rules. And I'll leave a little space in between. So here I have my two columns in Photoshop, and they look really good. I'm, going to put, I'm also going to put my heading above this, so I'm not going to do that just yet. I deselect everything. If you have these um, edges on, you can simply go to Extra, Show Frame Edges, or Hide Frame Edges. Some people have these frame edges on the whole time. I kind of think they're a little disturbing, so I just go ahead and hide them. The next part of the project is to go ahead and get that pizza file. So we're going to go to File. We're going to place the file into InDesign. I'm going to navigate over to my pizza PSD and I'm simply going to click OK. I see this little thumbnail and the program's asked me to put it someplace. I know I'm going to put it in the middle, but for right now I'm just going to click OK. Now in every other program we just simply drag to make it bigger when we see these angles, but in InDesign we need to go over here to the tool underneath our scissors and that would be our scale tool. So I think I'm going to make my pizza about this big my text wrap can wrap around it. To deselect the pizza, what I'm going to do is just click off it with my selection tool. And that's how you deselect. And now to do the text wrap, we need our text wrap palette, which looks like this. Keep in mind also you have all of these mini menus way up here in your timeline. So the text wrap attributes are actually already on your screen up here. But if you don't have that, you can go ahead and go to Window, Text Wrap, and pop this out. In order to make the text wrap around the objects, we take our selection tool 
we choose all three objects. And in this case, we want the text to wrap around the object shape, not the bounding box. So we go ahead and click this. And we can see that our text already jumped away from the object and pushed some of the other text down the page. Now, I don't particularly care for the text to be this close to the object. So what I'm going to do now, after I've deselected both, is I'm going to select just the object, and in the text wrap palette, I'm going to click this to make a little bit of a border or a gutter around the picture. If I keep going, the space in between the picture and the, and the writing will get bigger. If I zoom out, you can see what the text wrap looks like. And now I can go ahead and start manipulating the size of the picture, where the text is, the size of the text boxes. If I want the text boxes to be even, I can still push and pull the text in any direction I want to create the alleys and the gutters that I think will make my page look really good. Keep in mind, this page doesn't have any of my background images on it yet. It doesn't have any of the, of the titles, but I can go ahead and put a title in up here if I like and I can go and customize it later. Pizza for everyone. You simply make a text box and start to manipulate the text size, the text placement, where you're going to put it, whether it's going to be centered or, or flush, and then go ahead and start working your page that way. But that is text box, text wrap, and creating paths in Photoshop.